A new report shows a record high number of job openings at the end of July. More than 10 million positions needed to be filled, and about 8.4 million people remain unemployed. According to The Washington Post, that is creating a labor gap as the economy tries to recover after the pandemic. Last week, we learned 235,000 jobs were added in August, but that is short of the monthly average increase we've seen so far this year. To help us break down the state of the economy and the job market, I want to bring in Heather Long. She's the economics correspondent for The Washington Post. Heather, welcome. Great to see you. So what exactly is driving this discrepancy between job openings and unemployment? That's right. Uh, there's almost 11 million job openings we just learned this week from the latest Labor Department data. And there's three things that are really holding people back from returning to jobs. Number one is obviously still some concerns about the Delta variant. That's obviously um, preventing people from wanting to go back to some of these restaurant jobs or even healthcare jobs. Uh, and also uh, making it hard to find childcare in some cases in order to free up parents to go back to work. But as we dug a little deeper, there's something else that we discovered that it's important to keep in mind, and that is there is a mismatch between where these job openings are and in what industries they are in and where the unemployed people currently live and the industries that they had experience in uh, in their last job. So what I mean by that is mm. there's a ton of job openings right now in the hospitality sector, in retail, healthcare, education, and business. And that's not necessarily where the bulk of the unemployed people used to work before the pandemic. So it can be hard to switch industries. The last point that I'll make, a lot of people, of course, were worried about those unemployment benefits. Those were scaled back this week for millions of Americans. But the other one to keep in mind is that there are over 3 million Americans who have been unemployed for a long time, six months or more. As we all know, the longer that you are out of work, the harder it is to get back in and get a job. And certainly, as I talk to unemployed people, they are telling me that if they have been unemployed since March or April of 2020, they do not feel that companies are giving them a chance. They're, they're looking at that gap on their mm -hmm. resume, and they're putting them at the bottom of the pile. So interesting. You also mentioned geography, and that sounds to me like an important point because, like you said, especially if you're talking about lower wage jobs like retail and hospitality, uh, you know, job openings in those fields aren't enough to make people move, correct? So are you seeing a lot of these openings in places where there aren't a lot of unemployed people to match those spots? We are. And you're certainly seeing a lot of suburban areas that are booming right now as p some people have moved from cities into the suburbs to get those homes with yards and more space during the pandemic. If you're at those shopping malls and areas, it looks almost in some cases like the pandemic no longer exists because there's high levels of traffic in the stores there compared to some of these vacant downtowns, particularly New York City, Washington, D.C., and San Francisco. Uh, unfortunately, Unfortunately, those areas, those suburbs, are also the place that we have seen the highest shoot up in housing costs. And it's very difficult to move to places like that. We are hearing from workers who say, I know the jobs are there, but how can I get there? I can't afford to live nearby. Public transit in many places is not back at 100 percent. They are not running the number of buses and subway lines that they used to at the frequency that they used to, making it very difficult uh, for people people to get to those jobs. Right. All good points and sort of, you know, leads to the conclusion that perhaps some of these jobs are just going to remain unfilled and some of these people are going to be continuing to look for work, you know, um, in the very near future. It doesn't seem like these dynamics will change too quickly. So um, I want to talk a little bit more about the, that enhanced unemployment uh, benefit that you mentioned earlier. Of course, several states were already winding it down months before the federal aid shut off on Monday. Do we know at this point then the effect uh, those states saw when they ended those programs earlier? Did, did it have a big effect on the job market in those states? 
Yeah, it's a great question. Obviously, there's been a lot of attention on this. Uh, so 22 states actually were able to end those benefits early. A few more tried, but were blocked by, uh, by court cases and lawsuits from doing so. But in the 22 states that actually did roll back the benefits early, we saw three clear trends. Number one, employment did not surge in those states. There was not some sort of massive mm. rush back, as many people, particularly Republican governors, had hoped to see. The number two thing that we saw is, unfortunately, there was an uptick in those states in uh, people who were who were hurting. So we did see in various surveys that there was an uptick in people saying that they were going hungry or missing bills, so the hardship increased. And the last thing that's particularly important for the economy is we saw some spending pullback in those states. So there was a bit of an actually hit to those economies. Obviously, if people who used to be getting $600 a week were now getting zero, or in some cases getting half that, about 300, they are not going to spend as much. And so we are expecting to mm -hmm. see some similar trends uh, now that this has gone nationwide. Very good point. You know, we were able to sort of determine, uh, you know, or at least examine what happened in those states that pulled the benefits early. And now we can sort of extrapolate that that will happen on a wider scale. Um, so, Heather, based on the patterns we've seen throughout the pandemic, do you think we are looking at a permanent shift in how Americans look at employment, how they consider jobs, or do these changes seem to be just a trend? Absolutely. I think you've really hit the heart of what's going on here. I've been calling it the great reassessment of work in America. What we're seeing over and over again with a high number of people quitting their jobs, even if they have jobs, a really high number of people retiring right now, and a, a large number of people you know, who are just rethinking how they want to work. So maybe people who would prefer to have these hybrid or work from home schedules or prefer to switch industries. Uh, or start their own business finally. All of this is sort of pointing to, as you talk to people, whether they're employed or unemployed, what you hear over and over again is the pandemic really changed me. It, it changed the way I want to live my life and the types of work I want to do. You know, so maybe people want to, I'm hearing a lot of people who want to switch careers into something that they feel is more meaningful or something where they can spend more time with family or on their hobbies. And so businesses are trying to adjust to that. That's why we've seen the pay skyrocket, particularly in the retail and the restaurant sector, as they try to say, hey, come back, we'll pay you more now. But we're also <laughs> seeing them have to do even more than that, like offering uh, mental health and, and health care benefits in, in sectors like restaurants that didn't, by and large, used to do that. Or I've even heard companies trying really creative things, like taking their employees to the zoo and giving them all the day off with their families. <laughs> Is just trying to find ways to to recognize that this pandemic has changed people and people want something different from their workplace. Absolutely. A lot of changes to absorb. Heather Long, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Thanks.